bar into straight line. He has already uh, taken us through the PCET practical guidance how to clear and he has taken his time out and answer all the queries. I on behalf of the Chamber of Tax and the Dents and the member present here, so that I have to thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we have a small break for 10 minutes. Here we have a little bit of a last thing. Thanks. TTP, what are the methods, uh, various application sections? We should have a final discussion where whatever we have learned, we should try to confuse you. And in view of that, we had Mr. Vishwi Pandey who said, I would like to confuse the audience by making several case studies. Maybe they, will, they should go home so that they should come and consult us again. <laughs> I thank Mr. Vishwi and uh, our concurrent guide and advisor, Mr. Tarun Kumar Singhal, for having done a wonderful job in helping us to structure this program. Vishwi especially for guiding us in structuring every session and helping us in coming up in this last session. All the four case studies are made by him personally and uh, he has appeared very advanced to all the patients. Uh, friends, we have more than uh, 200 participants. People have come from various cities outside Bombay. We thank you everybody to come and give an overwhelming response uh, to this course. Uh, before I tell the uh, panelists uh, and uh, Chairman of the panel, or you can say moderator, Mr. Rispi. I request uh, Mr. Rajesh L. Shah to formally introduce the panel and then take it forward. Thank you. Good evening, friends. We have, a, we have a galaxy of stars. What film stars? Professional stars. Now, first, Mr. Ajit Kumar Jain. Yes, here is Chartered Accountants since 90, uh, in 1988 and he became an IRS in 1990. Presently, CIT Bian representing TTPS for the last two years and earlier he was CPO for more than three years. Talking offline, he said now he knows only about transfer price and he doesn't know anything else. So I think I present Mr. Ajit Kumar then. Mr. Rohan Patakrishnan he is a partner and the national leader of the KPMG Indian Transport Pricing Practice. He is specialized in TP and advanced pricing arrangements. He is the national leader of global transport pricing and he has handled various cases and multinational clients since last several years, I think it's since the time he is introduced. He is among greatest among the top 10 professional transfer pricing advisors in the world, in India. And he has 22 years of experience, all around experience as a chartered accountant. May I present to you, Mr. Bigor, Mr. Bigor. <laughs> Our moderator, Mr. Vishpi Patel. He is He has been a charter since last more than 25 years in practice and since the transfer pricing, international transfer pricing was introduced, he has been in this line and he has advised various multinational clients and he is present in now he a partner, senior partner in this city, particular associates. He has handled various multinational clients into the broad spectrum of transfer pricing, business strategy, business transformation, documentation, account and account strategies and all others. Industry includes automobile, engineering, financial services, infrastructure, and all sectors. He has been nominated as India's leading transport pricing consultant by International Tax Review, World Tax, and Eurovani Legal Media Award. He is also been considered as leading tax expert by International Tax Review, World Tax. I present to you, Mr. Vishwi Patel. Before I hand over the charge to Mr. Vishwi Patel, may I request Mr. Yatin Desai to hand over our memento to first to Mr. Ajit Kumar Jain. Thank you, Mr. Vishwi Patel. I request Mr. Inger Joshi to hand over the memento to Mr. Ron Patel. 
So this is the thought which I give to you. And now, what have we done? And the chamber has requested that we try and create case studies which are normal transactions because now 48 because now specified domestic transactions the scope is so wide that every professional is going to get involved in it because the limit of 5 crores which has been said I believe is an absolutely I mean impractical limit that has been said because you will find so many, so many domestic transactions which take place not necessarily for shifting profit but they take place for various business and strategic reasons. So now everyone is caught into it. And just for your information, probably many may be aware of it because those who have practiced tax as a law and not tax as an accountancy, you may be aware that SDT as it is defined tends to move away from profits and gains of business or profession also because even section 58 is there and if you want I will just read that section 58 so it will give you a little brain teaser I will continuously read the law because this is specified domestic transactions unlike section 92 and why? because it will re-emphasize the importance of those sections so what does section 58 say? Section 58 subsection 2 The provisions of section 48 shall so far as may be applied in computing the income chargeable under the head income from other sources as they apply in computing the income chargeable under the head profits and gains of business or profession. This is the first movie. Why? Go back to 92 BA. Does it only cover transactions under section 48 to for the computation of income under the head profits and gains of business or profession? And the answer is no. Why? I will read 92 BA for you now. So this is already the first case study started, huh? You have patience, no? Then we'll continue. Because Hinesh has said we have to close quickly. I am happy to close just now. 92 BA states like this. For the purposes of this section and sections 92, 92C, 92D and 92E, Specify domestic transactions in case of an assessi means any of the following transactions not being an international transaction, namely, now the importance of reading the law, any expenditure in respect of which payment has been made or is to be made to a person specified in clause B of subsection 2 of section 48. I will repeat because they say that in Indian system of schooling, Abhyas is the best. Because I have seen one thing in my life that the more you read the law, the more you understand the law better. Just like, for example, in marriage, first there is the raspberry fizz and then you try to understand it. Each life partner gets to understand each other as time passes on. So it's like this. I will read it again for you for the benefit of your knowledge. It is any expenditure in respect of which payment has been made or is to be made to a person referred to in, sec in clause B of subsection 2 of section 40A. So it is only referring to persons and it does not refer to persons specifically for the computation of income under the head profits and gains of business or profession. So this is where you have to read the law minutely. So therefore, 
if there are transactions in the nature of section 48.2 applicable to income from other sources, will they need reporting? And the answer is yes. Now, there are these case studies. Now, there are these case studies. So, we have tried to cover in each case study some critical parts. So, what does the first case study want to do? You know, there is this particular uh, proposition of law. And I think uh, I'll, we, we should make ourselves absolutely clear on this particular perspective over here. And I think uh, Sir will agree that when we discuss on the panel, and he's also our brother professional because he's first a charter accountant, then an IRS officer, and then a commissioner, just as we first are all CA. Am I right, sir? Fine. Right. So now it's like this. Though I may ask him some questions, it is his personal view, and I think that's something which we all, we all have to accept very graciously that he will give his personal view, does not necessarily identify with the department view. And that's critical. Otherwise, then there is no fun. So it's like this. There is this concept. And how right this concept is, I do not know. But there is this concept in international transfer pricing that you can notionally attribute income to transactions under section 92.1. Is it correct or not? Is not the question on this table at the today, on today. So therefore, just to clear doubts, the first case study tries to refer to attribution of income. Is it covered under specified domestic transactions? Is it covered under the so-called domestic transfer pricing? So that is one part of case study one. Then, the persons which are covered under section 48.2 is indirect holding cover and we get to that. Then what is the effect of the amendment in 2012 or 13 to section 48.2 where fellow, something like fellow subsidiaries are covered. So that is also covered in the case study. Then most important, where does for section 48.2, where is it legislated and what is the heading? So I will read 48.2 before we get to the case study. Not the whole section, only some parts. Because capital account transactions are covered and there is a lot of queries, lot of discussion in various forums on this particular perspective. Whether interest payment is covered, very interesting. I'll try and give you a perspective, which probably will be the opposite of everyone. But I'll try and give it to you, because you don't think, then you can't think. And then, how do you benchmark, if you have to benchmark your interest? So now for capital expenditure, and that is, because this first case study is only on section 48.2, no? So therefore, before we open the case study, for the wisdom from my co-panelists, I will just read two, one or two important lines of section 48.2. Section 40A finds itself in the chapter on chapter 4 computation of business income. What's the heading of section 40A? Expenses or payments not deductible in certain circumstances. Important for us to understand the play of capital expenditure. I am aware that headings are not to be used only for the purposes of interpretation of law, but you have to read the law as it is. That's the first principle of reading law. Headings will give you an indication, but it is not necessarily the law. So if there is a tug of war between a heading or a marginal law and the law itself, then the law prevails. That's what the Supreme Court says, which under Article 141 is the law of the land of the constitution. So what, is, what does 40A1 say? We all refer to 48 too, but we should read 40A1 also. Important. 
the provisions of this section shall have effect notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained in any provision of this act relating to the computation of income of income under the head profits and gains of business or profession and 482a the last line i will read so much of the expenditure as is so considered by him that is the assessing officer to be excessive or unreasonable shall not be allowed as a deduction so therefore the heading matches with the written law i close it now i hand it over first to my friend rohan rohan you are case study please Thank you, Mr. Chief, for the detailed uh, discussion uh, and uh, starting this panel discussion. Also, let me just mention that uh, my name is Rohan Patakar, and uh, in the second name is a tongue twister, and, and uh, normally end up uh, getting pronounced in a different way. I think uh, just uh, to also just to give a background and my perspective on on, on this recipe uh, before we get into the case study. Uh, I, I really don't want to go into the history because probably through the day you, you understood really what was the objective of introducing the domestic trans pricing. But uh, and of course it has been there in a lot of countries like uh, US or China and, and it's not a new thing that has come to India. But I think the objective of introducing domestic TP the way the Supreme